Hello again, and welcome back to our series of Lenten meditations for this Lent of 2022. We are at Thursday, the 32nd day of Lent. We're almost to Holy Week. Hang on, we'll be there soon. But our meditation for today, yet another challenge. Uh, we're talking about giving up resistance to change. Someone once said the only certainties in life were death and taxes. However, another thing that is certain in life is change. There's you know, a lot behind the saying, nothing stays the same forever. Seasons come and seasons go. You can read Ecclesiastes 3 and, and see biblical precedent for that. I've always liked the line, you can never step in the same river twice because the water that you stepped in the first time has long moved on, even by your second step. But we resist change. We try as hard as we can to hold on to some ideal past or present. We romanticize about the glory days when things were somehow better than they are today. And, and so we, kind of, we, we try to keep things the way they are and the way they were. Part of the problem, though, is when you look at them really closely, those glory days were not as glorious as we make them out to be. The present is probably not much better than things were back then, and we would do well to envision a changed and better future. In Matthew 4, verses 12 through 17, Jesus begins his ministry. And the message that he preached was, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You got to pay special attention to that first word, repent. Repent means to turn around and go off in a different direction. Repentance is different from confession. Confession is to admit that I'm wrong. Repentance is to actually stop what I'm doing, change my ways. Ultimately, repentance is about change in me. Repentance starts with an open heart. Ask God to reveal to you what needs to be different. Ask him for the desire and the will to make the necessary change. There are many times when we know we need to change, but the change we need to make is just too hard. Well, rely upon God's strength to help you make it. One of the keys to embracing the necessary change is to have a solid foundation. If you have a solid foundation, change is not something to be feared. For us, our solid foundation is Jesus. He keeps us centered and secured. The Bible says, Hebrews 13, verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the Alpha and the Omega, we read elsewhere. He is the beginning and the end. He is the most certain thing we have in life. When our world is rocked, Jesus does not roll away. There's also change around us. The change will often come like a tsunami, and there's no way to stand against that wave. We've seen sweeping changes across the landscape of Canada and America, the social climate, and the entire world over the last several years. There are numerous approaches people take in regards to change. Some will fight it. Some will bury their heads in the sand and try to ignore it. Still others embrace it. I may not always like what's happening around me. I may be upset about what is changing. I've found when I'm uncomfortable with the changes around me, it's time to go back to God and ask him what he wants to change in me. Problem's not always with what's happening around me, but the problem is often with what's happening in my own heart. 
world is changing every day. You allow God to change you and mold you. The future is full of exciting possibilities. Isaiah 64 verse 8 says, For now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Let's pray about this. Lord, you know we don't like change. We struggle with it. We would indeed rather that things stay at some ideal place and position for all our lives, if not all eternity. But the only thing that we can count on is that the world will change. People will come. People will go. Our ability to do things will come and go. Eventually, we will come and go in the lives of many others. So, Lord, help us to embrace what is happening. Help us to find our place. And help us to find your place in it so that the change is made, so that the change that is made is as positive a change as possible. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who changed the very rules of death and oblivion in favor of life and resurrection. Amen.